Morning folks, got a brand new GA canine training video for you. Today we're featuring Fremont Police Department's Tyne working a trail at the Citadel University uh, into a huge air scent problem. Today is just crazy, crazy wind. 25, 30 mile an hour gusts. It's super hard for a tracking trailing dog. Uh, and it creates some seriously interesting air scent problems, especially when you get to the end of the track. Enjoy. Leave that, get to work. Leave that, get to work. Leave it, get to work. The big change here for me is the tail set. This is what tells me I have a distraction. Her tail set when trailing is normally up and straight out. Now it's going all the way down. So I know I've got a distraction. She's not paying attention, so I gotta correct her. Leave it, get to work. So what's the difference with this and why don't I correct it? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, her tail set doesn't really change at all. But more importantly, watch how high her nose goes up with this. I mean, it's lifting really, really high. Matter of fact, she'd keep going if she could, but she goes right back to track. I think this is probably my subject's contact odor, uh, and it's something that we have to follow, and I'm not going to correct that.
the beginning of um, what I call a far proximity alert. We're about 300 yards away from the subject, and if you notice that uh, Tyne's head's coming up, she's looking around, but probably the biggest change is we have ears uh, propped forward. Uh, they're pointing forward quite a bit uh, as she's sampling the air uh, on the wind. Uh, it doesn't last forever, and she ends up having to go back to track. So pay attention to this because it's really, really subtle, but it's one of the first indications that you're getting a proximity alert. If you miss this, uh, you could lose your track, or you can also get into danger if it's a criminal uh, suspect track. Let's replay this. Um, we just got the far alert and then all of a sudden her intensity changes significantly. She's pulling a lot harder, she's looking left, looking right, um, and her head's almost completely up. What she's doing right now is she's following the fringe of the blown odor. Our trail is actually behind us, but she's getting a lot of fresh wind coming from right to left. Uh, the wind is about 25 miles an hour and what it's doing is it's blowing all the way up here, up against the cars, up against the grass, up against a lot of barriers. She's going to follow the odor all the way around until it ends. Proximity alert. It's all the way right in here. I bet it's blown from around the corner. So this is what we call the triangulating alert. It's when the dog gets actually into the scent cone and she head pops hard right, head pops hard left. She knows exactly where the odor comes from, so she charges right into the middle of it. Big time right there. how she worked that so what it see how she went all the way in front of the building it's because of all that wind it's all blowing back there she got to the end of the building it was like a brick wall and she had to turn around and come back it was amazing that's a beautiful trail actually so let's take a look at the map time stayed very very close to the actual track until we got into the parking lot about midway through, she threw, she threw a uh, what we call a far alert. This is where we get a little bit of wind, 
uh, scent on the wind. It's circulating. There's no direction to it. There's no scent cone. There's no scent pool. So this actually forces the dog to go back to the track. As soon as she goes around the bend into the next section of the parking lot, everything changed quite a bit because what happened here is all of a sudden the concentration of wind scent became much stronger. With that concentration of wind scent came her drive to get to source a little bit better. Now, there's no scent cone and the fresh blown odor trumps the track. So what does she do? She follows the bulk of the blown odor as far as it actually goes. And it's up in these barriers of the trees, the parked trucks, and the building. And she follows it until it completely ends. The nice thing about this dog is once the scent was over, she literally stopped in her tracks, looked back at me, and ran back to where she had scent as fast as she possibly could. As we're getting closer to the scent cone in the woods, she begins to change her animation significantly. Agitation, uh, heads completely up. She starts head popping left and right. And right then I knew she had the scent cone and we worked right into source. It's super important, folks, that you do not force your dog to the track. I'll repeat that. Do not force your dog to the track. Dogs know how to find things by scent better than we do. If God gave them the gift of scent to stay right on the track and to ignore air scent, that's what they do. They don't do it that way. Fresh air scent's there for a reason. They use it to find the source. Allow them to do this. Allow them to do it naturally in training without your influence, and you're going to have a better dog finding people more often. Thanks for watching this GA canine training video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. More importantly, I hope you found it informative. If you like what I do, if you like my style, if you want to learn how to find more people in a much easier fashion using a trailing dog, make sure you check out my brand new book. It's called The Tao of Trailing, and it's available at gaknine.com.